Hello, welcome. It's good to be together, even in this new way and in this time, this unprecedented time of social distancing. We gather to worship. We gather because we love God. We gather because we love one another. And so in this different way, we are gathering today to be together and to remind ourselves and to remind others that we are loved, loved deeply by one another, and loved by God. As we often do, let us begin our time of worship with a song. pray that you would speak to us this day. Use the words that we form, use the music that we hear and sing, use the thoughts that are formed, and yes, use the fellowship, even though it is more distant than we are accustomed to. Use that fellowship as well to speak to us. This day we pray. Amen. We are not meant to be alone. God knows that. We know that. 
We read in Genesis chapter 2, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. We hear that often at a wedding. And we know that we are meant, not meant to be alone. We are meant to be together. And I looked and this word together appears nearly 500 times in the Bible. Jesus called the 12 together and gave them power and authority. The shepherd calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying with them, Rejoice with me. The woman who has lost the coin, when she has found it, she calls together her friends and family and says again, Rejoice with me. Again and again we read, We are meant to to be together, together to celebrate, together to mourn, together to work, together to play. We are meant to be together in community. But these days we are not together. We are practicing social distancing. We at Good Shepherd are not very good at social distancing. In fact, in more normal times, I encourage us not to practice social distancing. We gather for worship together. We gather for study together. We gather to play board games together. We gather to share a meal together. Again and again, in normal times, we gather together. But these are not normal times. We cannot gather together in the ways that we are accustomed. These are unprecedented times. This Sunday morning, the sanctuary is dark and silent. In this and many other ways, we separate ourselves. We practice social distancing. I don't like it. Normally, as part of our worship gathering, we pass the peace. And I've attended churches where this is done in a very perfunctory manner. You turn left and shake hands and say, peace of Christ be with you. And then you turn to the right, shake hands, say again, peace of Christ be with you. And you sit down. Everybody sits down. The whole process takes 20 seconds, maybe 30 <laughs> Not so here at Good Shepherd. We shake the hands, of course, of our immediate neighbors, but then we move far across the sanctuary to greet someone we haven't seen for a while. Some of us make a point of seeking out those we don't know, someone who may be new to the church, greeting them and welcoming them. Oh, and by the way, our greetings aren't just handshakes, although they include handshakes, but there's warm hugs among many as we share Christ's love with so many throughout the sanctuary. Passing of the peace here at Good Shepherd takes several minutes. It's hard to get us back into our seats. There's, there's always just one more person we want to greet. <laughs> We're not very good at practicing social distancing here at Good Shepherd. And I lament that we cannot be together. <laughs> There's that word again. Together for worship and fellowship and study and so much more. And as I've thought about this, I wanted to publicly lament that we cannot be together in the ways in which we are accustomed. And as you probably know, it's my custom to wear a bow tie to our Sunday worship. So, as an act of public lament, I'm removing my bow tie today. This one was a gift for St. Patrick's Day. It's one I didn't get to wear this year. I'll take this one off, and I'll not wear another bow tie until we gather again together 
in worship. We have much to lament. And again, I remind us that we are created for community and to encourage us to remain in fellowship together. Earlier this week, Jill and I received a card from one of the uh, from Kyle, a young member of our Good Shepherd family. It was a very simple card. It was a wonderful card. Kyle wrote to let us know that he was thinking about us and then he cared about us. Thank you, Kyle. I encourage you to do the same. Reach out to your family. Reach out to your church family. Reach out to those in your neighborhood. It might be as simple as a phone call. It might be a text message. Or you could follow Kyle's example and send a card. I know. I will. Dear ones, we were made for community. I read an article earlier this week about the brain science and how that part of our brains are simply wired to be together. And that one of the things that we can do in times like this is simply to reach out and care for one another, contact one another, that there's brain science behind that. But dear ones, we know, we know God created us for community for each other. And we know that God loves us. And now, especially, we are called to share that love with all of those about us, even at times such as these. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we move into a time of prayer, let me remind us that we are hosting a Facebook Live event, Oconomowoc United Methodist Church on Facebook, and that during that time, we will pray for those specific prayer requests that you may have. So I invite you to join us then for that, that time, that special time of prayer. Let us come together in prayer. God, our faithful shepherd, you guide us, you comfort us, you protect us. We thank you that you care for us, that you soothe the wounds of this life, that you love us. We know that you are faithful and we bring before you now the lives of others and the care of this world. We trust all things to your goodness, the goodness and mercy that pursue us every day of our lives. We ask that you bring healing. Oh, Lord, we ask that you bring healing to those who are ill of body, mind, or spirit, especially in these unprecedented times. We ask that you bring release to those who are held captive by old hurts. We ask that you bring comfort to all who suffer. You hear, and we believe that you respond to our prayers don't let us off the hook, though, God, for many times we are the, prayer, the answer to the prayers that we, we speak. Help us to respond in your name, to share the light and the warmth that we have experienced with you with others. Help us to see the world as you see it, to see others as you see them, and to see ourselves as you see us. Continue to pursue us with your goodness and love until goodness and love fills our hearts and all hearts. This is our prayer. We close our prayer together by praying together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will close this time of worship 
with another hymn. This time the hymn is How Great Thou Art. Jonathan. Now hear and go out in peace in these words of benediction. The light of Christ 
shines in our darkness. Don't put that light under a bushel basket, but hold it up for all to see. Let us go out in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.